I'm Alexis Mizel, and I work at the Center for Organismal Studies, COS, here on campus. I've been in Heidelberg since 2010, first as a group leader, and then from 2015 onward as a professor for cell and developmental biology. So I've been uh, working in actively in research since 2002, where that's the date I completed my PhD. So my research work started at the turn of the previous uh, century, so 1998, that's where I started with my diploma. So I was working in Paris on animal development. And then after my PhD, I moved to North America, to San Diego, work to work for, for plants. Then I moved to, with the same lab, I moved to Tübingen, keep on working on plant development. That was until 2005. Uh, I worked for the CNRS until uh, from 2006 to 2010. And then um, from 2010, I arrived here in Heidelberg, work, still working on plant development. I decided to become a scientist because I wanted to do that, actually, since I was a kid. I was fascinated by, um, by this notion that you could, you know, investigate what was not known and actually have fun uh, out of that. And uh, so far it's actually turned to be true, so I'm very much enjoying what I'm doing. So I'm active in teaching at both the bachelor and the master level. So at bachelor, I predominantly uh, give a seminar on um, uh, planning scientific work. I'm also offering uh, courses in uh, statistics and programming using R. At the master level, I give lectures in um, cell and developmental biology, both in animal and in plants. I uh, um, also active in, you know, obviously hosting students from for the bachelor thesis, uh, the whole practica, uh, and then a master for the different rotation. And I do a little bit of teaching at the graduate, postgraduate level for HBICS occasionally. So the lab is uh, always open to motivated students uh, at the bachelor and, and, and master level. Bachelor student um, can do their thesis with us. Uh, it's usually customary that they spend a whole practica with us before. Same thing for the master thesis. Um, uh, we are very uh, eager to have motivated students. Uh, we like to, and I think it's better that the student come for a rotation prior into the lab to see what we do exactly and whether this is a good fit for, for them. In terms of HIV, uh, we occasionally have needs for HIV for specific tasks, uh, so this is usually posted on the website. Teaching for me is, is very enjoyable by the fact that you convey knowledge, so you transmit knowledge obviously to, to the students, but I think it goes beyond just, just the facts. It's actually conveying the passion or the interest we have for the, for, for, for the topic. And I really, really uh, like this, this moment where you can capture the attention of, of, of the students and, and make them share uh, or share wisdom, actually, the passion or, or the interest that you have for, for that given topic. So, yeah, that's what I like the most. So in the lab, we're interested in understanding how organs uh, are shaped in plants, so how plants form organs. So the important thing is that, unlike animals, plants constantly form new organs. You know, animals, they don't grow new arms or legs when they want to run faster uh, or grab more things. But plants, if they want to harvest more light or suck up more nutrients from the environment, they will make more leaves or they will make more roots. So they constantly form these organs. And we are interested into the principle that um, uh, are responsible for making up these organs so reliably. So in the lab in particular, we're interested into uh, the root formation um, and how new roots are formed. In the lab, we're working with um, Ariodopsis thaliana. Uh, that's a small model plant uh, for which we have the genome for more than 20 years. The plant in itself has little agronomical interest, but it is basically a typical plant for many processes. We have a lot of tools um, to study its development or, or um, do a lot of interesting things with it. In the lab, the kind of techniques we use mostly is classical molecular genetics, so studying and altering gene function within our Eudopsis. Uh, we use a lot of cell biological approach, looking at how cells behave, what how component within the cells locate, what dynamically, uh, or organs develop. And to do this, we employ a lot microscopy. So we have different kind of microscope called confocal or light sheet microscopy that allow us to basically look at the process as they happen. So we're recording live uh, what's happening within cells or uh, in organs as the plant develops. So we have several projects running currently in the lab. One in particular I like, can tell you about has to do with understanding uh, how cells know where they are. 
um, it may look trivial, but when uh, a cell, when an organ is formed, cells must know, must know what's the inside, what's the outside, what's the up, what's the down, so they must be able to orient themselves. So we have a, a whole line of research at the moment trying to understand how do they know where out is, where in is, and all, in which direction they should go. So this is the kind of, of questions, fundamental question that we are tackling into the, into the lab is um, how cells orient themselves so that organogenesis or, or form formation of new organs is taking place correctly. So failure in research is inherent to research itself. A lot because we're exploring the unknown, um, typically we start with an hypothesis, we design an experiment and it may work or may not work exactly as we plan. So uh, there, is, there is a fair amount of things we do that do not work on the first attempt. But then we learn from these mistakes or fail, fail attempts and, and get better at it. And I think this is intrinsic to the, to the scientific discovery process. Hypothesis, design experiment, examine the result, and if it's conclusive, we move forward. If it's not conclusive, we learn this knowledge to improve and go on. The stories that are read into scientific papers uh, they, they, they read as they flow and it's very natural, but the experiments were not necessarily run in that order and were not on all successful in the first attempt. There might be years and years of work behind it that does not perspire uh, in this manuscript. This hard work behind the scene is what uh, makes um, uh, the story as it is and it's absolutely indispensable to, to the process. So when you do uh, scientific work, you formulate hypotheses, you, you test, and then you examine the result and, and see whether this is fitting the hypothesis you had. And I think the most exciting moment is when the result you expected is not the one you see coming. So that when you have something unexpected coming up. So uh, this forces you to revise your, your assumption and, and rethink deeply about how you think the system is working, how, which the model you had built in your head um, how you can adapt it. So we recently had such um, observation in, for one of the project, we thought that doing that specific experiment would in simple term make the cells so weak that uh, the lateral route we are looking at are, should be able to grow much faster um, uh, than, than, um, than before. Though what we observe is exactly the opposite. Actually, they have much harder time um, uh, growing and this was very surprising, but this led us to rethink and actually reconsider the way we were thinking of this uh, protein we were studying was working. And that gave us a new perspective onto what it was and, and led us to, to understand it, how it works much better. Students should take the opportunities they have during their studies to uh, explore as much as possible. And especially here in Heidelberg, where you have such a vivid environment, great scientists, many excellent labs covering a wide portfolio of topics, that it's a really golden opportunity for you to, for, for, for students to basically try out different things. Even topics that a priori they would not be uh, so keen on studying or, or for which they have only a remote interest, they should take the opportunities of their study to try different things. So I think my main advice would be um, be open-minded. If I have a second advice is work and work hard because unless you're super gifted, which usually is a very, very small number of, of, of people, um, whatever you do, um, we require some, some, some work. So, uh, and it's so much better to work on something you are interested in than on something else. So hard work and open-mindedness uh, are for me two um, important parameters.